Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I etch drawings on metal. I'm going to use this cheap Harbor Freight axe to make a viking axe and then I'm going to etch my drawing on that axe head. design on the axe and then I use an angle grinder to cut it out. I hand sand the surface to 400 grit, that way the paint will stick to the metal. Now that I have it sanded to 400 grit, I use rubbing alcohol to clean the surface really well. And I make sure to wear gloves, that way I don't get any oil or debris on the axe before we paint it. I want to make sure that the surface is really clean before we put the paint on. I use Krylon Fusion all-in-one paint as a resist. Any other paint that I've tried to use in this process ends up dissolving when I try to etch it. After I let the paint dry overnight, I rough up the surface with some sandpaper. That way when we go to do the transfer, the graphite will stick really easy. So first I'm going to use the tracing paper and trace the profile of the axe on there. And then that way whatever we draw or trace inside that profile we can transfer onto the axe. I used Google Images and printed out what I wanted to put on the axe and then I'll trace it inside the profile on the tracing paper. Now that I have these characters on the ends, I wanna fill up the background with the design. So I printed out another image that I thought would look good as a background. But first I'm going to mark an eighth inch from the edge and draw a border. That way the background is inside the border but then the characters are kind of popping out a little. I think that would give it some depth. Now that we have the design done and it's traced on the tracing paper, we can transfer it to the dura layer. The image will mirror when you transfer it, so you have to flip it over if you want it to be the way you drew it. This dura layer accepts ink, lead, and colored pencils, and it's clear so it's really easy to line up your image when you go to transfer it. I just taped down a strip of the dura layer over the image and then I used a 5mm graphite pencil to trace the image onto the dura layer. This graphite is what's going to transfer to the axe. Now that the image is transferred to the dura layer, I can use that to transfer it to the axe. The side that you draw on has to be the side that faces the axe when you transfer it. The graphite on the dura layer will transfer to the axe when you burnish it. 
Once I get everything lined up, I'll tape it down and use the graphite pencil to burnish it in. If you have a burnishing tool, you can use that, but I like to use the graphite so I know where I've been. On this side, I cut the transfer paper out to fit the axe, that way I can tape it a little more precise. I found it to be a lot easier this way. Now that the image is on the axe, I use a scribe tool to scratch away the paint where I want it to etch. Now that I got the paint scribed off where I want it to etch, I use this battery charger as my power source and I use salt for an electrolyte and water to make the etching solution. I use a glass jar to etch it, that way you can kind of see through it to see how it's doing. Just make sure whatever you use, your item fits inside it and your container doesn't conduct electricity. For this much water, I probably use about a quarter cup of salt. It doesn't need to be super precise, as long as you have salt, you should be okay. More salt does seem to help it etch quicker though. I make sure to stir it really good and dissolve the salt completely. And then I'll tape this up to the ring so it doesn't move around. Obviously you don't want the rod to touch the axe. So you want to hook up the ground to the water and then the positive hooks up to the piece that you're trying to etch. I use this copper wire to hook up to the axe. That way I can suspend it in the water and then I'll hook the positive up to the other end. Everything is all set up and ready. I'm just going to hook up the positive to this end of the wire that's hooked up to the axe. And then I can turn it on and I'm ready to go. And if you see it fizzing like that, you know it's working. Usually my amp gauge reads about 7 amps. Right now it's reading 9 amps. I just gotta check it periodically to make sure it doesn't over etch. As far as how long it takes to etch, it just depends on how big the piece is that you're trying to etch, how much water you're using, how much salt is in the water, how far away the probe is from the piece you're etching. All these different variables add up. I usually use the amp gauge to tell how long I should be etching something. The higher the amps, the quicker it'll etch. When you're etching something different every time, it's hard to get it down to an exact science. 9 amps was really fast this time, so I did it in 10 minute increments and it took 3 rounds of etching to get it done. So about 30 minutes total to etch the axe. Now that the axe is etched, I'm going to use acetone to remove all that paint. I use a nylon brush and it comes right off. After I rinse it with water, I use the 400 grit sandpaper to clean it up. I use aluminum black metal finish to darken the background. I use q-tips and I'll cover the entire surface with the aluminum black. That way when I sand it, all the deep areas where it's been etched will stay black. Here, I wanted to see if I can get it darker. Heating it up with the torch and applying it hot does seem to help it get darker and stick better. I use the torch to heat up the surface and then I come in there and apply it hot. There is a sweet spot where if you get it too hot, it'll burn. But as it cools down, it'll really attach itself to the metal pretty good.
Alright, now I'm going to wet sand it with 500 grit sandpaper. I soak the sandpaper in water and then I'll wrap it around a lighter and I'll use that as a hard vac for my sandpaper. You can use something else as long as it has a hard vac, that way you're not sanding between the cracks. I like the oval shape of the lighter, also a wide sharpie marker works pretty good too. I'm going to use the original handle that came with the axe and just modify it a little. Basically what I'm going to do is just exaggerate the curves that are already there. I used my 4x36 belt grinder for this part. Those lines I drew are just guidelines. I'm not going to grind that deep. So I sanded all the rough corners with the 80 grit sandpaper and then I used the 220 grit paper to clean up all the scratches to get it ready for the stain. I found some old stain that I'm going to use. Can seen better days, but stain's okay. You don't have to stain this either. You could just put boiled linseed oil on it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it, especially to the end. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I read all the comments, so if you do have a question, I'll definitely get back to you.